Hey everybody, welcome back to Dark Souls 2. Um, as I stated in the last episode, I will explain what just happened, because there's a lot of explaining I need to do, which I'll probably do throughout the tutorial area. I might not even end up until I finish it, explain most of the differences. So, first off, dual wielding is now a prominent thing in this game, as well as two-handing. I wish I had something to demonstrate, but I don't. Um, I guess I can try with this. Eh, kind of explains my point. Anyway, dual wielding, two handing, and all your weapon types are now a big difference. And another big difference is, if you remember in the first game, where there are actually quite a few weapons that, uh, quite a few items that blocked. And you also couldn't get a torch. Torches play a big role in Dark Souls 2, but again, I'll get to that in a minute. I need to first explain. Uh, the point of <laughs> the weapons. So, the big thing is the shields. Sh uh, most of the shields within this game do not block 100%. Uh, tower shields are, of course, the exception, and that's about it. So, two handing and dual wielding has become almost more preferable by this point because since uh, two handing now doubles your strength. So you can wield weapons, like I, I, I believe my level, I believe you saw it in my invasion videos, when I two-handed the greatsword and I took my strength stat and I was only 16, well if I tried that in the last game it would have ended in failure. Alright, so, dual wielding is now no longer laughed at since you can power stand and that will result in you doing more damage. Sorry, and doing more damage with the pure fact that you can hit faster with both weapons. Uh, I wish I could do a wheel with just normal fist, but for now I'm just gonna put some stuff. You guys don't mind that. You guys don't mind punching things, right? So, uh, I'm actually gonna clear this place out before I bother lighting up the rest of these areas. Just, uh, just feels like the easier thing to do, to be honest. Um, getting back to dual, to dual wield. So, a number of people that I've seen at least who dual wield normally, normally are very good at their craft and have fairly good weapons for dual wield. Um, speaking about the combat system though, reposting, reposting, whatever. Pairing someone and then striking them, as well as backstabbing, are greatly different and require a lot more skill. Because as you saw there, there was a prompt that time. So if you can dodge the prompt, you're safe. No more just people trying to fish for a backstab and they can automatically get it. Uh, not just that, but... I uh, he shot me. There's more of an emphasis on guarding and uh, on not guarding so much, but dodging in this game now. You know, and it also it also kind of helps you if you learn how to. It does help to parry, and it also does help that there's a new move now called the bash, and the bash is for enemies that block a lot. So again, you're having trouble with a uh, player cat with, with PVP. He's got that one guy who found the 100% lock shield, and he's abusing his power. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. That was weird. You can just bash him, and then it leaves him vul vulnerable for a very powerful critical move. But again, I'll, I'll tell that tale. Again. So, really quickly... If you guys remember Snugly from the last game, uh, another, more of the differences, these are what I call the Snugly Twins, and they do not operate like Snugly because they will only take these two items, because they want small, well they want smooth and silky things, so actually let's not give them that first, let's give them this. And of course they go through a number of items that you can, that you will get in return. Let's see what I get. Ah, Crimson Water. So that can bring me to my next point without having to go for something else. So, 
believe this? Yes, you! Give us Suki! So cute. I wonder why the... Oh, by the way, they're both girls. I don't know why the other one... Oh, okay, so I got to get a whoop. I don't know why the other one sounds like that. Bad scripting, probably. So... Anyway, I was, I was just talking about the combat, and I stated how... I got lost, I'm sorry. Oh yeah, the bash. So... If you learn how to bash people, your life will be easier, because enemies are affected by bash as well. But, you also have to worry about a new danger of when your shield breaks. If you remember the first one, if your shield breaks, you know, it wasn't that big a deal. You just take a moment to recover, and if someone hits you during that time, you may even recover even faster. Now, you can be critical hit. And it will do a massive amount of damage, maybe even kill you in most times. I know I got killed a couple times by people who broke my guard. And even the game advises, sometimes you may just want to let your guard down instead of take that hit. Because to be honest, it's much easier to get your health back and your stamina back when you... Sorry, I was about to part of the song but when you just let your guard down for a second I've practiced that actually uh, taking time right quick alrighty ah there we go I think I've actually missed a couple of these on my original on my first character so the torch to get to that issue that topic now is a fairly useful thing and you light it it has a five minute timer so once the five minutes are up you know that's all you get However, if you have numerous torches, it's not like you have to go back and light the torch every time. It is just, you know, it's a little tedious, I, I understand. But you can, the, the timer will just be longer, so you won't have to light every torch. Again, if they did it the other way, I wouldn't mind as much, because I have adapted to, you know, running back to the bonfire often. Which is another big thing, healing items are now... Most of them are consumables, so I'll explain that right now, actually. As you saw, I got a Crimson Water from the Twins. What the Crimson Water does is it greatly restores HP and spell uses. So now most mages, power masters, and clerics can now go around and use their spells more often. I know I just, I know what I said, but I just figured it'd be easier. So, for example, let's say I was a sorcerer, or I was on my main character. And I had just used my spells for PvP because, you know, I was dealing with a difficult opponent. Um, simple thing is, use that, get back some health and some spell uses. Or, of course, if you don't want to do that because you have full health, you can use a number of herbs. Well, I did that first try. I actually died during that a couple times. Um, I'm using a capture card for this. I'm not too happy because... Uh, that character card came at the cost of... Well, me being able to use it came kind of at the cost of my laptop. I'll explain that in the next episode. Alright, so, another thing is... The requirement for, I guess, what would be called the fast rule is much different in this game as well. And that's a, that's a good thing, actually. Too many times, people would get killed because they couldn't roll fast enough, even though they technically should have been able to. The medium roll wasn't necessarily a medium roll, it was more like a a faster fat roll. That was it. And the vulnerability time certainly didn't help. Um for more explanations. Go to your local no. Uh I keep saying uh I'm not happy with that. Basically, this game pays you for paying attention to things. So if you remember in the early area well, actually, I'll just show you with this spot, as it says. Uh, because I didn't tell you guys. You can actually now read tombstones. And a number of things are different. Okay, I'm gonna Batman this. No, I'm not. Too risky. <laughs> Sorry. I'm like, I did it the first, when I first started playing, I actually did an epic move where I just ran up the thing and jumped down and stabbed the guy. It was cool as shit. Uh, when I unlock everything, I'll... Let's... Okay, I still got time. Oh, oh, shit. Motherfucker. <sighs> Welcome to Dark Souls. Prepare to die. 
Another thing is durability in this game is now much, much more important. Going to a bonfire will reset your durability, unlike the last game. But if you don't have the... If you know your weapon does not have the durability to go through a whole area, be prepared to be switching out a lot or be very sad. Um, another big thing is hollowing process. When Now, as you saw, I was human when I died. I'm now an undead, tech, or more undead than before. You suffer more for dying. A chunk of your health gets lost upon death. So, unless you get a special ring, you best be certain you're careful about how many times you die. I was not careful. I forgot that in that area there was a trick to shoot an arrow at you, and I didn't decide to heal. Again, bad on my part. Uh, another thing, after the backstab animation, you can actually continue to be hit in that time you're getting up. If you don't react quick enough, that could happen. Yeah, death. And you will die a lot. You can also be hit while you're backstabbing, so again, playing smarter is the name of the game. No, it's called Dark Souls 2. Ha, no, I'm sorry. But just play smarter, you'll live longer. I was not playing smart. I did not live um, oh, another big thing. You have now three weapons to switch from, which means, again, paying attention to that little, <laughs> those numbers over there is important. You also have four ring slots. And I know people might be upset by that, but honestly... It's not that big a deal. I've seen people who have who can have the best rings on and still get wasted. Um, spells and miracles are also very different in this game in that the, you have the ones that you would remember and then you have a lot of cool new ones. Um, however, it, it's been enough time. I'll end the episode here. Till next time, guys. Wish me luck on my adventures as the deprived Lorand. And pray for me as I prepare to die.